So here's the scenario. You've got your on-premise device management sorted. When your computer's in the office or on the VPN, Config Manager can look after its configuration and compliance. But what about computers that only live on the internet or connect via a VPN? Or even worse, connect via a VPN that isn't really that stable? The Cloud Management Gateway is an Azure service that lives on the internet. It allows your computers to connect directly to the internet-based server to receive configuration, updates, and all that kind of stuff. It means that your computers don't need access to the on-premise network to receive their configuration, applications, and updates. In this first episode on the CMG, we're gonna look at configuring certificate templates and enrolling those certificates on our CMG servers. We also need each computer to have a certificate to allow communication. At least we do in this episode. In a future episode, we're gonna look at enhanced HTTP, which will mean computers don't need a certificate and instead they can rely on the Azure identity of the user to secure that communication. For now, let's jump into Active Directory Certificate Services and create that template. So the first thing we need to do is create and issue the CMG Server Authentication Certificate. We want to be able to specify exactly which server is going to be receiving this certificate. We're going to go ahead and create a new group called Config Manager Servers. And in here, we're going to add our server. So we have a security group called Config Manager Servers and that contains our Config Manager Server. Next step is to open the Certificate Authority Console. Right click on Certificate Templates and choose Manage. We need to create this template that can be used for the server to issue its own certificate from. We're going to start with our web server certificate and we're going to duplicate this template and leave this stuff as default. Heading over to the General tab, we're going to call it the CMG Server authentication certificate and then we're going to head over into security add and then add in our config manager servers group that we just have here and give that enroll permissions heading back into that cert in the request handling tab we need to check that the allow private key to be exported is ticked we'll take that and choose ok so we'll close this certificate templates console down Right click, new certificate template to issue. We'll choose our CMG server authentication certificate and choose OK. And so now we've made it possible for our config manager server to request that new CMG server certificate. Now that we have our certificate template in place, we need to generate a certificate that we can use on our CMG. Now remember the CMG is a cloud service. It won't be a computer on our domain. It won't be a server that we can log into. We'll upload our certificate using the Config Manager console, but we still need to generate it somehow. One way to do that is to enroll our certificate on the Config Manager server, and then export the certificate with the private key and import that onto our CMG server. Heading over to our Config Manager computer, we will go to start and launch the certificate snap in. In local computer, we want to choose personal, right click, all tasks and request new cert. We choose next next and you can see the first one is the cmg server authentication certificate it's available but we need more information to enroll this cert so we'll click on this and we need to give it a full distinguished name or something else in order to enroll and so in this field we need to choose the globally unique name that we've chosen for our cmg in my case i'm going to go ahead and choose common name and then the globally unique name is gmcmg and we'll add cloudapp.net to the end of that Go ahead and choose add then we tick the box to request this certificate and choose enroll okay so we've enrolled this certificate so that our config manager server identifies itself as gmcmg.cloudapp.net in order for us to be able to use that certificate we need to export it so i'm going to go ahead into personal certificates and find gmcmg.cloudapp.net right click and all tasks export choose next and we want to export the private key so choose next and then next again we need to give it a password and choose next i want to put it somewhere really simple for me to find so i'm going to put it on the c drive and grab it from there with the service certificate exported and ready to go we're on to the next step we need each client computer to have a certificate to enable secure communication with the cmg in a moment we're going to create a template for the client authentication certificate that we'll use to allow automatic enrollment for our windows clients over in our group policy management console 
and we need to create a GPO in this domain and link it here. We're going to call the GPO Client Authentication Certificate Auto Enrollment and choose OK. We'll just expand this tree and find our Client Authentication Certificate Auto Enrollment and choose Edit. We're going to go into, into Computer, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, Public Key Policies. We're going to right click on Certificate Services Client Auto Enrollment and choose Enabled. We want to renew expired certs and we want to update certificates that use templates. And we're going to choose OK. Close this down. So just heading into one of our clients, I'm going to go to an admin PowerShell prompt and open Certal M. And we're going to do a GP update slash force. From here, we're just going to check if our certificate has enrolled. And it looks like it has. Going to the details tab on this cert, you can see that it was issued today, about 10 minutes ago. And the template name is the Config Manager Client Authentication. So next, the CMG must trust the authentication certificates that client presents. We need to give the CMG what's called a Client Trusted Root Certificate so that it can verify these machines. The next thing we need to do is to find the Trusted Root Certificate. So we're going to go into Certification Path and then choose the Trusted Root to click View Certificate. In this window, we choose Details and then Copy to File. From here, we choose Next. We want to use the DER encoded binary. We choose Next to give it a file name. Okay, so we're almost there. Next, we're going to set up the Azure Services in Config Manager and then set up the Cloud Management Gateway with a cloud distribution point. So heading back into the Config Manager console into administration, we need to right click on Azure Services and choose Configure Azure Services. We're going to call this service the CMG and choose Next. We're going to use the Azure Public Cloud and we need to create a new web app. We're going to choose Create and then call it CMG and then call this the CMG Config Manager Service. We'll choose a SQL key that never expires and we'll sign in. We've signed in successfully, so we just need to press OK. And then OK. We need to create a native client application, so we'll choose Browse. We'll click Create and we'll give it an application name. I'm going to call it CMG Client and then sign in. Choose OK and then OK. We're going to choose Next. We're going to choose Enable and Enable for these two settings. Choose Next and then Next again. In the Administration Console, we're going to go to Cloud Services, Cloud Management Gateway, and then Create Cloud Management Gateway. We'll use the Azure Public Cloud and then sign in. We're signing in the subscription that we're going to use for the billing of this Cloud Management Gateway. It's pre-filled our app names to be choose Next. Here we need to use the CMG certificate file that we exported from our server earlier on. So we choose Browse, and for me, I put it on the C drive. So I'll grab my Get Modern CMG and type the password. I'm going to change the region to Central US, and then I want to change my resource group and create a new one. I'm going to create a new and call it CMG. In the next field, we get to specify exactly how many virtual machines we will be creating here. The default is one. I think I'll only need one. I've only got a few clients here, so I'm going to go ahead and choose one. And then we'll just go into the certificates tab here. And this is where we need to specify the trusted root certificates that we specified earlier on. Better my trusted root. Choose OK. I don't have certificate revocation configured in this environment. I want to untick that. But I do want my CMG to function as a cloud distribution point and serve content from Azure Storage. I'm going to choose Next. I want to keep this 14-day threshold on for outbound data transfer. And I'd like to stop the service when the critical threshold is exceeded. In my environment, if I serve more than 100 gigabytes, I'm going to be worried because I've only got a few clients. So I'm going to leave that as 100. But in live environments, it could be much higher. Similarly with the storage threshold, I want to keep that as about 200 and then choose next. So that's the process complete for creating the cloud management gateway. Okay, so we're making progress. Next, we need to create a boundary group and distribution point group 
that will help us manage our infrastructure. As you can see, our um, CMG is provisioning at the moment. I'm going to add it into a boundary group for now. Into hierarchy configuration, and then boundary groups. Right click on the corporate boundary group and choose properties. In the references tab, we're going to add our site system server here. And we're going to add it in this uh, CMG server that we've just created. And choose OK, and then OK. At this stage, we either have the choice of enabling enhanced HTTP so that computers don't need to rely on computer certs, or we can enable enforcement of HTTPS across our site. For now, we're going to enforce HTTPS, and then later on, we'll use enhanced HTTP. Now we're going to set our config manager site to be HTTPS only. So browsing down to the site node, right click on the site, choose properties, and in the communication security tab, choose HTTPS only. And for me, I'm going to turn off this CRL checking because I don't have that in place. Next, we'll set our trusted route certificate authority and we'll use that trusted route that we picked up earlier on from that client. Let me just choose OK. We also need to create a, a web server certificate for our config manager server. So in certificate templates on the domain controller, I'm going to right click and choose manage. And we find the web server cert. Right click and duplicate. Leave this as default and change the name to config manager web server. And change the security to allow config manager servers to enroll. I'm just checking the subject name field we've got supplying the request set because of the web server so it's default to that. Choose OK. And then we'll issue that template. Heading over to our config manager server we can request that certificate by opening up the certificates map in for computer and we'll right click on personal all tasks request new. We'll choose next, next and the certificate I want, just the bottom there, Config Manager Web Server, more information required, that's good. So we'll choose the common name and it's CM1, and its alternate name is cm1.corp.contoso.com. Give it a friendly name so I can find it. Choose Enroll. Okay, then now that's done, we'll open up IIS and find the default website. Right click and edit bindings, find the HTTPS binding, choose edit, and then change whatever set to our Config Manager web service certificate, and choose OK, and then close, and restart IIS. OK, now that's done, we need to create the Config Manager CMG service point. So to add the CMG connection point, we go to Service and Site System Roles, find our primary site server here. Expand that a bit. I'm going to right click and add a site system role. I'll accept the defaults. And on the site system role page, I want to choose the Cloud Management Gateway Connection Point. This is my Cloud Management Gateway. Through to the summary and complete that. So I'll just close this down and then head over to the Cloud Services section, Cloud Management Gateway. You can see our CMG is ready and I will go to our connection points and this uh, this connection point server hasn't quite finished setting itself up yet give that a few more minutes and we'll take a look in the meantime we're going to go into our management point and check that we have it set up to accept cloud management gateway traffic so I've right clicked on management point and chosen properties and then we have an option here of Allow Configuration Manager Cloud Management Gateway Traffic. So let's choose Allow on this. And you can see that instantly changes to allow internet and intranet connections. And we'll do the same on our software update point. Right click Properties. And then we'll choose Allow Configuration Manager Cloud Management Gateway Traffic. And you can see it changes down to the bottom there. Allow internet and intranet client connections. So choose OK. Just going to quickly head back into our Cloud Management Gateway node here and choose the CMG and then connection points and hopefully our connection point server is now connected which is great. And finally we need to go into our client settings and enable clients to use the CMG and the cloud distribution point. 
key over into client settings and then we're going to create for me i'm going to modify the default client settings and in the cloud services section i have this set to yes i'm going to tick this to yes as well and then choose okay okay the moment of truth now we get to test whether this has all worked so we're going to force a client to be always on the internet we're going to connect it to the internet rather than my lab and then we're going to deploy an application to it and see what happens so to verify whether this has worked we're going to just check a few things on our client firstly let's take a look at the configuration manager properties you can see it's currently assigned a management point of cm1.corp.contoso.com and it's using the PKI client certificate. I prepared an application that I can use to install. This application, this VLC application, is currently not installed. It's available to install. And if I choose to go into um, the CCM cache, you can see I've got no cache of this application at all. So when it does download and install, then it'll be coming from the distribution point. Just heading over to, a, to our config manager server, here's the app I'm referring to. I'm going to just check where it is, where the content for this application is. Go into properties on the app and then choose content locations. And you can see it's up in the cloud app distribution point at the moment. So it's not, it's not available on my on-premise distribution point. So hopefully it will be able to download it from there. Okay, so for this test to work, I need to make sure that I can switch from the internal management point to the external management point by just, I'm just going to change my network location, my uh, network adapter from the internal network adapter to my uh, home, home Wi-Fi, home. I'm just going to head over into the control panel and grab the config manager applet. Okay, so we can see it says uh, connection type currently internet. The management point is this cm1.corp.contoso.com. And if we check in the network tab, you can see it's got this internet based management point here. Okay, well, let's see what happens when I try and download this app. So it says downloading 0% complete. I'm gonna hit just looking into this cache directory. It has created some work folders here for the download. that temp file and this download is going up let's see if it can manage to install it it seems to have downloaded which is probably the test so that's probably good enough but let's just see it install VLC is quite quick to install so I'd hope it would be finished fairly soon there we go got VLC installed it's great news okay wait for this to catch up and do the detection method and just make sure that's all there so we can uninstall it and, and do a retest later on. Okay, that's moved over to installed. And that content genuinely did come from the CMG. It isn't available on my on my on my LAN, so that's 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 really good news. So we've done it. We've deployed applications to clients on the internet using the cloud management gateway to send policy and the cloud distribution point to host content. I've really enjoyed working through this with you. I hope you've enjoyed it too. In our next episode, we're gonna look at some of the logs that are generated when you're using the cloud management gateway, both server and client side. And also we're gonna look at the Azure side. What are the cost implications of using the cloud management gateway for an update for a, a large application, that kind of thing. For now, thank you for watching. If you've liked this, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.